Now a story that has nothing to do with man-made innovations. It is just man against nature. Open water swimming is one of the most dangerous and unheralded endurance sports in the world, taking the body to the edge in conditions some describe as madness. Among the obstacles, sharks, poisonous jellyfish, violent seas, hypothermia, and physical agony beyond comprehension. Without wetsuits, swimmers brave the planet's coldest waters, sometimes for up to 20 hours. Their only armor, goggles, and a swim cap. There are no spectators, no parades. It's just you against the water. The English Channel is the Mount Everest of marathon swimming. Every summer, swimmers who dream of crossing it come to a tiny island off the coast of Ireland to train. The Cork Distance Week has been called the most brutal open water camp of its kind. Invitation only and not for the faint-hearted, it's the brainchild of an American expatriate. If you're looking for a torture swim, then Ned Dennison is your man. Come on, pick it up! Come on, Trevor, give us a lap around the boat! Get in there, dig harder! Come on, Lindsay, this is your year! They came from around the world, doctors, teachers, and homemakers. Swimmers of all ages, shapes, and sizes. Oh, good swim. Well done. Somebody might be faster than you, might be bigger, taller, shorter, slimmer. It doesn't really matter. This is a sport where it's about getting there. Can I? Okay. Uh, Steve Payne. Steve Payne is a firefighter who's tried to swim the English Channel six times and failed. You are the toughest man in the world. You're Desperate, the he came all the way from Australia, convinced that the Celtic Sea and Ned Dennison could prepare him. How much does this mean to you? Everything. Take your mark! For nine grueling days, Dennison led more than 60 swimmers down city rivers and up narrow streams, through rapids and remote lakes, along Ireland's dramatic cliffs and out to open sea. Something in the human psyche loves this test. They seek it out, they want it, they want the challenge. In all, they swam nearly 40 hours over 60 miles. Since 2009, 46 of Denison swimmers have gone on to conquer the 21 miles from England to France. What is it about the English Channel? It's epic, it's mythical. Good luck. It's ugly, it's tough. I just want you to all close your eyes and I want to give you some real examples of what people have enjoyed in these big swims. You swim, the 200 meters from France, and there's a bank of fog so thick that the captain says, we can't go in. Oh, by the way, the wind just picked up. You're cold, you're tired, everything hurts. You can cry for your mommy, you can get out, or you can keep swimming. A short distance from the harbor town of Kinsale is Sandy Cove Island. On day one, Dennison brought his swimmers here to the camp's ocean base. He calls the island magical and the water lucky. A mile around, its unpredictable conditions mimic the English Channel. We have temperature variations of a lap around the island of eight or 10 degrees Fahrenheit. So when you've rounded the first corner and the temperature's absolutely dropped, you're likely to get into much rougher water. Sometimes it's like a washing machine. A washing machine set to cold with temperatures as low as 50 degrees. If you pour a cold bath right to the top, that'll be warmer than it is in here. If you spend too long in cold open water, what can happen, worst case scenario? You get hypothermia. The warmth goes into the core of your body, and at some point, if there's no more warmth, your organs start failing and you die. To avoid hypothermia and survive the 12 to 15 hours on average it takes to cross the channel, swimmers spend hundreds of hours acclimating to icy waters. Oh. A few hours in these frigid seas left swimmers shivering, their faces blue. It looked less like Ireland in summer than the sideline of Lambeau Field in winter. You tend to get the claw. The claw? Yeah, it's called the claw, the swimmer's claw from swimming in the cold so much, but I find... And this is fun. Yeah. I'm cold right now. In the channel, wetsuits are officially banned. So to appreciate what these swimmers endure, I took the plunge. All right. The water's going to feel cold to start with. Once you get in, 
If you move your arms, the first 11 strokes will not be cold. Then it will hit you. Uh, we're going to head straight out here. Ready? Yeah. The cold instantly crushes you. Holy shit! I'm impressed. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. This is a warm day. God. It's like when we hit your face. You can't even breathe. You cannot breathe. Oh. Swimmers spend four hours a day in these waters. I lasted four minutes. First time's horrible. Second time's not much better. The third time, your body and your brain are sort of getting used to it. Ned Dennison has swum around Sandy Cove over 1,200 times. At six foot six, with the wingspan of an albatross, he is a legend in the world of marathon swimming. He's fierce, and I like that. He owns the water. The water's parked in front of him. The Lord has risen. He walks on water. By day, this open water guru works in IT sales, but his mind is never far from the sea. His walls are lined with charts of his global swims, from the English Channel to a stretch in South Africa full of great white sharks. You're swimming at night and your hand hits something. And it doesn't move away. Or it swims away. At night, in the dark, when you're all alone, when you've been out there for 12 hours and you're tired and you're lonely and something just moved, you better be pretty strong mentally. It's 90% up here and in here. It's do you have what it takes? I do not understand swimming. I've never taken a swimming class. Well, uh, you don't understand swimming? I don't coach swimming technique at all. I am a motivator. I'm a seriously dangerous motivator. And Dennison, how are you, man? And a generous one. For Dennison, the camp is a passion project. Nervous? No. <laughs> For all the week's pain, he only charges around $100 to cover his costs. Swim, Kate, swim! When they're in the water and we're doing everything possible to make them uncomfortable, I want them to remember that they paid for it. I'm waiting for their instructions, O oh, Tormentor Supreme. He's a mentor. Uh, he's not quite Yoda, but... <laughs> a little bigger than Yoda. He's a lot bigger than Yoda. Come on, Anne-Marie, swim! Anne-Marie Mullally was an unhappy, bored, middle-aged mother of four who dreamed of swimming the channel but never thought it possible until Dennison pointed to Sandy Cove and convinced her she could do one lap. I was filled with self-doubt. Can I do this? Could I do a long-distance swim? Ned has always said, go for it, you can do it. She started to do more frequent laps, and she is now signed up for the English Channel. 20 and a half miles left to go, you're doing great. <laughs> Keep swimming. You're 48. Be 49 in September. Four teenagers. Mm -hmm. And you want to swim across the English Channel. You got it. Yeah, you coming? At distance week, some have already conquered the channel. Others aspire to. My longest swim was last Friday. I swam Gibraltar. My next challenge is to butter my wife up so she'll let me do something similar again. <laughs> the camp lures some of the world's elite marathoners, like Adam Walker. This is the ultimate challenge of yourself, mentally and physically, because there's nowhere to hide out in the middle of the ocean. Walker came to prepare for the last of the global swims known as Ocean Seven. What a fantastic spot. The equivalent of climbing's seven summits. During his quest, he's been escorted by dolphins in New Zealand and stung by a Portuguese man of war in Hawaii. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. And all these people lined up at this camp want to be different to everybody else. Everyone has something to prove, demons to battle. When Alexia O'Mara made it to France last year, she not only fought the channel, yes. but her epilepsy. So what happens when you have a seizure when you're swimming? As long as you're conscious, you swim. You know, there is no option other than to carry on swimming. In marathon swimming, the mind is often more important than the body. Sarah Tonicliffe doesn't look like an endurance athlete, but she swam the English Channel in just over 16 hours. I'm very proud. My body got me to France. My broad shoulders, they did 45,000 arm strokes to get me to France. I'm proud of every single little muscle that I've got on my shoulders. Steve Payne is an Ironman, but in six attempts, he's never been able to cross the channel. You finish 19 Ironmans, and the channel breaks you down. Yep. 
you just totally lose every bit of confidence that you had and you start to doubt your own ability and your own strength and your own resilience. Payne came to camp hoping to gain the mental toughness for his upcoming seventh attempt. A couple more laps, you're in France. That'd be nice. I'm sure you visualize standing on the beach in France. Yep. What does that look like? I know there's no, there's no cheering bands, there's no people waving flags. But that doesn't matter for you, all that matters no, is... not at all. Swimming alone, in pairs, or as an armada, each of Denison's swims is designed to test their resolve and prepare them for the unexpected, because the stakes can be life or death. You had a swimmer who was here two years ago, who tried to swim the English Channel just after leaving. What happened? He suffered a massive heart attack less than a mile from France. A year later, another woman, not part of our group, died in exactly the same place. Today, your job's really simple. Follow. There were mind games throughout the week. On this day, instead of looping around Sandy Cove, Dennison deliberately disoriented them. Where are you? What, what? I, I have no idea at this precise point exactly where we're going. There was a swim in a hidden lagoon that turned into powerful rapids. A rescue boat at full throttle struggled to pass through. The swimmers took a different approach. And you're headed out that way. Let's go. Dennison saved the worst for last. Sprint! There was his infamous torture swim, a punishing three hours that pushed swimmers to their limit. You're the terminator in the water. Keep swimming, man. He's really testing us. He's pushing everyone to the brink. He yelled, Come on! Teased, You know you've been in pain most of the week. And tortured. You have a half an hour to get Sending away. swimmers in opposite directions and ordered Steve Payne to pull a boat with a rope around his waist. Mile from France, Steve. Mile Great. from France. This was a dangerous place. Watch out for Adam up here. Boats circled swimmers to kick up waves. He went round me about five times. I was like, seriously, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> and sprayed them with the motor. Beaten down, their longest test came on the very last day. Three laps is all we reckon you gotta do. A six hour swim to qualify for the English Channel. Can I have a show of hands of all the ones that completed the six hours? Put your hands up. Come on guys, well done. A lot of you've got your own goals. Some of them are taking place quite soon. Listen, all the best with all those goals. See you, kids. In the weeks after camp, a number of swimmers set off from Dover, England including Steve Payne for his seventh channel attempt. Why is it that you keep going back? It's unfinished business. It'll be different this time. It'll be a different story. In the end, it was not. After seven hours, only halfway to France, Payne, physically and mentally broken, pulled himself out of the water. He failed, but six others triumphed. Another six completed a relay, including Anne-Marie Mullally, an achievement they now share with a long line of Denison graduates who conquered the channel by surviving Sandy Cove. What do you get when you mix a 10-year-old boy, a mountain bike, and fearlessness? You get Jackson Goldstone, a...